When you think of groundbreaking innovation, DARPA, or the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, should be at the top of your list. But did you know that DARPA doesn't actually have any laboratories or permanent research staff? Instead, they rely on a unique model that have been driving technological revolutions for over 60 years. Today, we are diving into DARPA's innovation model with a special focus on their software teams. We will uncover leadership lessons that can be applied far beyond defense research. And trust me, some of these stories are as fascinating as they are informative. Let's start with DARPA's core philosophy high-risk, high-reward research. DARPA isn't interested in incremental improvements. They are after technological breakthroughs that can change the game entirely. This mindset permeates every aspect of their work, including software development. Fun fact, DARPA's budget is about $3.5 billion annually, which is less than 1% of the total US defense budget yet they have been behind some of the most transformative technologies of our time. The first key lesson from DARPA's model is the importance of assembling the right team. Considering DARPA doesn't have permanent staff, instead they bring in top experts from academia and industry for limited terms, usually three to five years. This constant influx of fresh ideas and perspective is crucial for their success. For software teams, this model means working with some of the brightest minds in computer science, often on projects that push the boundaries of what's possible. It's not uncommon for DARPA's software teams to be working on problems that won't be mainstream for another decade or two. Did you know that DARPA's software teams were working on machine learning and artificial intelligence back in the 1960s? They funded some of the earliest research in these fields, long before they became the buzzwords they are today. The second leadership lesson from DARPA is the importance of autonomy and trust. DARPA's program managers are given significant freedom to pursue their ideas. There is minimal bureaucracy and failure is seen as an acceptable outcome if it leads to learning. In fact, DARPA has an unofficial motto, be right at the end of the program. This means they are willing to be wrong many times along the way, as long as they ultimately achieve their goal. For software teams, this translates to an environment where experimentation is encouraged and rapid prototyping is the norm. DARPA's software projects often involve creating entirely new programming languages or developing new paradigms to solve complex problems. Here's a fun fact. The programming language ADA was developed by DARPA in the 1970s and is still in use today in some critical systems, including aviation and space software. The programming language was named after Ada Lovelich, which is believed to be the first ever programmer. The third key lesson from the DARPA's model is the importance of clear, ambitious goals. DARPA's projects always start with a clearly define often seemingly impossible objective. This clarity of purpose help align diverse teams and drive innovation. For instance, one of DARPA's current software projects aims to create an AI system that can learn and apply common sense reasoning. They call it the Machine Common Sense Program. For software teams, these ambitious goals often mean rethinking fundamental assumptions about how software should work. DARPA's funded teams have been at the forefront of development in areas like quantum computer, cybersecurity, and human-computer interaction. Did you know that DARPA's software teams were instrumental in developing the technology behind Siri and other virtual assistants? The project called Kalo cognitive assistant that learns and recognizes run from 2003 to 2008. The fourth leadership lesson from DARPA is the importance of interdisciplinary collaboration. DARPA regularly brings together experts from diverse fields to tackle complex problems. This cross-pollination of ideas often leads to unexpected breakthroughs. For example, DARPA's software teams often work closely with neuroscientists to develop better AI algorithms inspired by the human brain. It's like a meeting of the minds between Silicon Valley and brain surgeons. This interdisciplinary approach has led to some fascinating projects. One current DARPA software project is developing AI system that can explain their decision-making process in natural language. Here's an intriguing fact. DARPA once funded 
a project to develop a computer interface controlled by the thoughts alone. While it sounds like science fiction, this technology is now being used to help paralyzed individuals control prosthetic limbs. The fifth and final leadership lesson we will discuss today is DARPA's focus on transitioning technology to real-world application. DARPA doesn't just develop new technologies, they actively work to ensure this innovation make it out of the lab and into practical use. For software teams, this means considering the end user and real world application from the very beginning of a project. It's not enough to create innovative software. That software needs to solve real problems and be adopted by users. One fascinating example of this is DARPA's role in the development of self-driving cars. Long before Google and Tesla were in the game, DARPA was organizing autonomous vehicle challenges that push the boundaries of what was possible in this field. And here's a final fun fact to wrap things up. The internet itself, originally known as ARPANET, was a DARPA project. So in a way, every time you watch a cat video or send an email, you are benefiting from DARPA's innovation model. This all sounds amazing, but if you are looking to implement clear improvements in your role as the leader of a software team, you should watch this video. Thanks for watching, see you next week.